Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the most important mineral imbalance that is hypercalcemia and its management. It is a very important mineral for bone formation and neuromuscular function. Both these uh, areas, this is one of the major uh, 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 component uh, which can build up the bone and uh, it helps in, in the transmission of electrical activity in neuromuscular junction. Around 99% of the body calcium is inside the bone and remaining 1% will be in extracellular fluid. What we are seeing in serum calcium that is mostly the uh, calcium which is present in the uh, extracellular fluid. Calcium balance is mainly regulated by uh, bone, uh, kidneys, stomach, but all these things are controlled by uh, an, a hormone that is parathyroid hormone and a vitamin that is vitamin D. PTH stimulates bone resorption, promotes conversion of vitamin D to calcitriol. So that will help in calcium absorption and main maintenance of uh, bone strength and uh, whenever uh, ca blood calcium comes down from bone it will be released to blood also. So you can see here low concentration of calcium in the blood, release of parathyroid hormone to the bone. From bone calcium will come out to the intra, uh, intravascular space or extracellular space. Kidney, it will decrease the loss of calcium in the urine and vitamin D production will be there. Intestine, it will enhance the absorption of calcium. So ultimately calcium levels will increase in the blood. Okay. So, PTH, vitamin D, these are the two important uh, hormones and uh, vitamins which helps in calcium regulation. Now, there is something called as ionized calcium. Nearly 50% of the serum calcium is iodized, ionized, that means it is free. And remaining 40% will be bound to albumin and 10% will be bound to anions like phosphates. So, that 50% is free calcium, 40% is uh, bound to albumin and 10% will be bound to phosphates. So, total calcium 99% is in bone, 1% is in the blood or serum. In that 50% is bound to uh, albumin that is uh, sorry 50 percent uh, in, in in that 50 percent 40 percent will be bound to proteins and 10 percent will be bound to anions now when we discuss about uh, calcium we always uh, compare the calcium with uh, uh, the uh, albumin so hypoalbuminemia and hyperalbuminemia we have to correct the calcium according to the albumin levels. This is called as corrected calcium. This is more important in hypo, hypo albuminemia than hyperalbuminemia. So hypoalbuminemia, whenever calcium is low, we can correct it so that you can get a higher value. Hyperalbuminemia, same like the hypercalcemia, hyperalbuminemia is there. That is one of the correction fa fa factor there. So if uh, hyperalbuminemia is there, we have to always correct the calcium levels. But it is not clinically, most um, clinically it is very important in hypocalcemia than hypercalcemia. Definition of hypercalcemia is calcium level more than 10.2 milligram per deciliter when the serum albumin is normal. That we have seen in the previous slide. When serum albumin is normal, the calcium level, if it is more than 10.2, we call it as hypercalcemia. Among all causes of hypercalcemia, primary hyperparathyroidism and malignancy are the most common causes. Primary hyperparathyroidism, parathyroid hormone will be elevated. And malignancy, it will be mostly uh, bone, uh, from bone lytic lesions, uh, including uh, uh, multiple metastasis and multiple myeloma patient can lose calcium from the bone. So these are the two important causes. 
Patients with hypercalcemia due to malignancy usually have very high calcium levels and they are highly symptomatic and they are resistant to treatment comparing with primary hyperparathyroidism. That's how we differentiate clinically uh, hypercalcemia due to malignancy and hypercalcemia due to primary hyperparathyroidism. In hyperparathyroidism, the symptoms are less, calcium levels are not very high and the response to treatment is quick. Whereas in hypercalcemia due to malignancy, symptoms are very high, calcium levels are very high and treatment response is very poor. That is a major difference. So if you can see here, uh, parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia, parathyroid hormone release will be high. That will produce uh, bone, uh, from bone calcium can be released to the blood, resorption of uh, bone, calcium and phosphorus, phosphorus released to blood. In kidney, increased calcium reabsorption, increased phosphate excretion. In intestine, activation of vitamin D, increased calcium uptake in, from the intestine uh, mucosa, all these things lead to hypercalcemia and hypophosphatemia. We, have, we should know why hypophosphatemia is occurs because PTH increases the phosphate excretion through the kidneys. So that is a reason for hypophosphatemia. So whenever we have hypercalcemia, clinically hypercalcemia, we always look for PTH levels. If it is high PTH, then the causes are two important causes, hyperparathyroidism and familiar hypercalciuric hypercalcemia. And that hyperparathyroidism is very important because PTH is elevated due to adenoma or hyperplasia of uh, parathyroid hormone. You can see in the uh, right hand side of the picture, PTH will be released. But whereas PTH is normal, we have to think about parathyroid hormone related proteins that is mainly seen in malignancies. So malignancy especially paraneoplastic syndrome these are proteins which resembles the hormone so parathyroid hormone related proteins that they will be released and you can get again clinical features will be same but all will be in a aggravated fashion. So all symptoms and signs of calcium will be hypercalcium will be very high in parathyroid uh, related uh, protein, parathyroid hormone related protein released induced hypercalcemia. Pseudo hypercalcemia is mainly seen in hyperalbuminemia. That condition is not clinically very common. So we will not be discussing that. Very rarely this can happen. So patients with hyperalbuminemia can have elevated serum total calcium. Now, Hypercalcemia causes, you can remember like this, chimpanzees, calcium excess, administration of over supplementation of calcium, especially in ICUs, hyperparathyroidism, prolonged immobilization, multiple myeloma, milk alkali syndrome. Multiple myeloma is a bone lytic uh, malignancy, bone related malignancy, parathyroid adenoma, aluminum intoxication, neoplasm. Which, uh, which can produce uh, malignancies uh, like multiple metastatic lesions in the bone or paraneoplastic syndrome, swallinger ellison syndrome, excessive vitamin D intake. Nowadays it is very common uh, all because of hypovitaminosis, many patients are taking vitamin D and they ultimately develop since uh, 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 when the vitamin D is very high, they develop hypercalcemia also. Sarcoidosis is another condition chronic granulomatous disease like tuberculosis that a patient can have hypercalcemia. Now symptoms we can remember with a mnemonic bones, stones, abdominal grounds and psychic mons. So bones, bone pain, hyperparathyroidism. Clinical features are generally occurring in uh, serum calcium more than 12 milligram per deciliter acute hypercalcemia. Many patients are asymptomatic. So bones means osteopenia, fractures, bone pain, uh, patient can have polyuria, uh, nephrolithiasis, renal failure, abdominal pain is very classical, anorexia, vomiting, constipation, pancreatitis, muscle weakness, confusion, irritability, stupor, coma. Arrhythmias are very important. ECG shows 
short QT interval whereas in hypercalcemia long QT interval can be there so you can remember it as bones stones grounds mons now ecg in hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia is very important you can get short QT interval sometimes you can give uh, you can get osborne waves this is classically described in hypothermia but in hypercalcemia also you can see this and ventricular irritability may show uh, ventricular fibrillation and arrest now whenever we have hypercalcemia always uh, see the albumin if uh, required calculate the corrected calcium levels then pth levels are very very important because we have seen that uh, elevated pths can be due to hyperparathyroidism if pth is normal or elevated with elevated urinary calcium primary hyperparathyroidism low urinary calcium familial hypercalcemic uh, calciuric hypercalcemia pth is low you have to always suspect malignancy we have to do x rays of uh, chest bone scan multiple myeloma workup uh, serum protein electrophoresis uh, angiotensin converting enzyme levels that is mainly seen in uh, sarcoidosis that is a chronic granulomatous disease serum phosphate if plasma phosphate is low then it is primary hyperparathyroidism we have seen previous slides how it produces hyper uh, hypophosphatemia because kidney loses phosphate because of pth action high plasma phosphate tertiary hyperparathyroidism now workup will be like this it is mainly depending on your parathyroid levels if parathyroid levels are very high think about hyperparathyroidism primary hyperparathyroidism urinary calcium is low means familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia then low pth parathyroid hormone related protein uh, then you have to always suspect malignancies lymphomas sarcoidosis so you may have to investigate for for that uh, you may have to take chest x rays bone scans all these things so there is a difference between multiple myeloma and multiple metastatic lesions in the bone multiple myeloma and multiple metastasis both produces lytic lesions in the bone but both produces hypercalcemia but alkaline phosphatases will be normal in multiple myeloma whereas in multiple skeletal metastasis alkaline phosphatases will be high so that is a very important investigation when we are seeing multiple lytic lesions in the bone but uh, protein electrophoresis is the uh, uh, most important investigation in uh, multiple myeloma that also we should remember now management is very important from emergency physician physician's point of view if uh, calcium is normal uh, slightly higher and patient is asymptomatic just ask the patient take plenty of water that is more than enough uh, no need to give any iv uh, any uh, iv treatment so just give lot of fluid increase the urinary output that removes the calcium and investigate for the cause for the hypercalcemia Now one of the major problem of very high calcium in our body patient develops severe dehydration because patient will be losing large amount of uh, volume through the kidneys so we have to rehydrate the patient rehydrate the patient and give diuretics so same time patient will have uh, hypo, uh, hypovolemia that has to be corrected and we have to promote the urinary output so that the uh, through urine calcium will be removed so we can give high uh, amount of fluid with lasix so iv fluids around 10 liters per, per day has to be given uh, 0.9% normal saline should be given with prusamide 80 to 100 mg uh, uh, every 1 to 2 hours we have to promote the urinary output so high volume infusion with lasix that increases the volume status that prevents the renal failure that removes the calcium from the body that is three important things you should remember so rate of initial uh, iv fluid will be 200 to 300 ml per hour and it has to be maintained around 100 ml per hour afterwards along with lasix either short lasix 
uh, one or two shots of mon, uh, three times or continuous infusion of Lasix can be given. Bisphosphonates, they inhibit bond resorption. So that is very important. It, it is done via interference with osteoclast recruitment and function. So there is increased calcium mobilization from the bone in malignancy and severe hyperparathyroidism. Bisphosphonates which inhibits bone resorption should be given for this type of patients. We normally give IV solidronic acid 4 mg in 100 ml normal saline intravenous infusion or 15 minutes. Pamidronate is another treatment option and etodronate is another treatment option. Only thing we should be very careful if the patient is already having renal failure, sometimes uh, we have to adjust the dose, sometimes we cannot give. Uh, depending on the uh, creatinine and creatinine clearance, the dose has to be adjusted. So IV solidronic acid is a very useful drug in hypercalcemia. Steroids. Steroids prevent the intestinal calcium absorption and increases urinary calcium excretion. It also decreases vitamin D production by activated uh, mononuclear cells in patients with granulomatous diseases or lymphoma, especially in sarcoidosis. This is very helpful in sarcoidosis. They are effective in hypercalcemia due to hematological malignancies like myeloma, uh, granulomatous uh, lesions or tumor lesions uh, and vitamin D intoxication. Hydrocortisone 100 to 300 milligram daily or prednisolone 1 to 2 mg per kg body weight oral also can be given. Calcitonin, salmon calcitonin infusion 4 to 8 international unit per kg 6 hourly IM or subcutaneous. It reduces serum calcium concentration by increasing renal calcium excretion and by decreasing bone resorption via interface with osteoclast maturation. For this purpose, nasal calcitonin spray is not effective. It is not useful for hypercalcemia, but it is a very good uh, treatment option for osteoporosis, but here it is not useful. So efficacy of uh, calcitonin is limited to first 48 hours, even with repeated doses due to tachypelaxis. So, you no, no need to continue it after 48 hours, you can discontinue the therapy and after some times, if the patient does not improve, we can restart it. Dialysis is the ultimate treatment of choice. If hypercalcemia is not responding to your routine treatment, especially in malignant lesions or if the calcium levels are very high, more than 16 milligram per deciliter or heart failure is there or if the patient is having renal failure, we are not able to give solidronic acid or other treatment options, fluids, then dialysis is the only option left behind. So, we have to be very careful, condition with the very high calcium, conditions with the acute arrhythmias which is not responding to your routine treatment, patient is having fluid overloaded state or we cannot give more fluids because of the renal failure, we are not able to give solidronic acid, then treat the patient with dialysis. So we have discussed one of the one of the most important mineral imbalance in emergency room and ICUs. If you have a very good uh, cancer unit, then the number of cases coming with hypercalcium will be very high. And ECG is one of the important tool. Serum calcium, serum albumin is very very important investigation. And moreover, uh, like patient can have other electrolyte or mineral imbalance also can be there. Hypophosphatemia can be there hypokalemia can be there, hyperkalemia can be there. There will be lot of interaction with potassium and calcium when we are treating. So that also should be taken care of. So treatment is mainly fluid, solidronic acid, steroids and dialysis. Thank you.